everyone. So as Lucy said, my name is Molly. I work at the USCDC with Lucy. And over the summer, for most of this year, I've been working on this prioritization of PAMIs for OCV use tool. Um, as we know, there is, uh, or the strategy for the global roadmap calls on countries to target areas that are heavily affected by cholera and play a central role to the transmission to other regions and areas. A lot of us call these hotspots. I'm going to call them priority areas for multi-sectoral interventions or PAMIs. Um, GTFCC recommends analyzing annual, annual cholera surveillance and testing data over the last five to 15 years where available to target these vulnerable areas. So over the last two years, we've been reviewing and creating the tool. Um, and then the spring of 2022, the OCV Technical Working Group identified criteria and developed the tool to help countries prioritize their PAMIs specifically for OCV use. Um, so the criteria that identified for the vulnerability and transmission risks are here, as well as susceptibility based on OCV campaign history, operations needed, and then of course, burden based on available epi data. Um, over the last year, the tool was tested by DRC and Bangladesh um, during their planning of their multi-year plan of action. I also was able to populate the tool with dummy data from the PAMI identification tool to identify areas of the tool that needed improvement. So as well as identifying a couple of bugs in the tool's coding, we also saw a need for incorporating population growth factors and vaccine eligibility for accurate target population and dose requirement calculations, um, a need to align the criteria wording and scoring with the PAMI identification tool, so it's a seamless transition between the two, a need to adjust the weight of scoring of the components to accurately categorize each PAMI, and countries requested including higher admin levels throughout the tool for ease of filtering and organization. And as I was going through it, I saw a lot of opportunities for automations to increase the user friendliness and reduce the country workload. So with this feedback, I went through the tool and improved the user friendliness and functionality. So this is the current version of the tool. There are three steps that we have gone through to prioritize PAMIs for OCV campaign planning. The first is data collection, then scoring, and then looking at operations. So starting with data collection, we're going to look at the available epidemi epidemiological data, which again is collected in the PAMI identification tool, the vulnerability factors that are also within the PAMI identification tool, and then information on OCV campaign history, specifically preventative two-dose. So I know this is a lot, but I will work through it. Um, so starting here with the mandatory and op optional criteria, for vulnerability and transmission, risk of transmission and spread. So starting with vulner vulnerability, we have one mandatory criteria, an area with high risk populations, such as internally displaced persons, refugees, fishermen, urban slums, et cetera, whatever is relevant to the country. Um, so that's the only optional. We then have four vulnerability or four optional criteria. There's only one mandatory and we have four optional criteria. Um, the first three have to do with wash, so areas that have access to water facility types, sanitation facilities, and hand washing. And then the last is areas with high risk for extreme climate and weather conditions, such as heavy rains, floods, and droughts. Moving on to risk of transmission and spread, we have two mandatory criteria, high population or overcrowded settings. Um, so not specifically a number, but just areas that might have overcrowding, such as urban slums and then areas adjacent to cholera-affected areas or identified PAMIs across international borders. The last one is an optional criteria, so the recent transmission during the last 12 months, um, recent cholera transmission during the last 12 months. Each of these does have an opportunity for four points, so if it's a yes, it's four points. If it's no, it's two. Moving on, we then have data for the OCV campaign history for each PAMI. So each of these lines is a PAMI that includes the higher admin levels. We ask countries collect data on the last two dose OCV campaign, both the month and year, and determined 
or um, according to the month and year, the next column will then automatically update to yes, if it's been within the last three years. Moving next is the available coverage. This can be either admin coverage or PCC, whatever is available. And the next column will automatically update if it is above 70%. Finally, we wanna look at population movement since the last two dose campaign, either yes or no. Next step is the scoring. So we have three scores. Each one correlates with a data collection category. So the PAMI score, which is also known as the priority index in the PAMI identification tool, um, is associated with the EPI data. The risk score is the vulnerability and risk of transmission factors. And the susceptibility score is for the OCV campaign history. So we have all of them here. Both the PAMI score and the risk score both have a maximum of 12 points. For the PAMI score, again, it's the priority index. The risk score does include both the mandatory and optional criteria. So if a country does not include the optional criteria, there's only a maximum of eight points available here. Um, the susceptibility score based on the OCV campaign history has a maximum of 24 points. So the way that the rankings work is we take the range of available data for the PAMI and the risk score and divide that into tertiles. So the top third of those scores is high, the middle third is medium, and the bottom is low. The susceptibility rank and score work a little bit differently. It's flipped. So if a country has a three or a two dose campaign with high coverage and no population movement within the last couple of years, um, we would say that it is a low susceptibility rank and therefore the susceptibility score would be eight. If they have not had a campaign, a two dose campaign within the last three years, it's automatically high and the score is 24. And then there's some nuance in the middle with the medium. All of this goes together to create the total score, which has a maximum of 48. That then informs the recommended prioritization, which once again is based on the range of available scores, not from zero to 48. So we take the range of available scores and split that into quartiles. So the top fourth would be very high, the next high, medium, and then low. We understand that countries might not see these prioritizations as what is accurate, and we want to provide that flexibility to adjust those prioritizations. So in the final prioritization column, countries are able to say if they would like that changed and then give a reason as to why. Finally, we'll go on to operations. So we'll look at planning the year of campaign rounds, the required doses, and then consideration for some operational questions. First of all, the development of the multimedia OCV campaign schedule. Um, so here countries are asked to insert the planned month and year for each round for each PAMI. Once the planned year is put in, the required doses for that round will then adjust based on, again, the um, population growth and the vaccine eligibility, both of which can be adjusted to country context. Those are then added up and we get the required doses for, or requ yeah, required doses for two doses, a two dose campaign, and also the target population, which is greater than one year old. Uh, moving to the bottom, we then assess three key operational questions that countries should look at. The seasonality of cholera, the accessibility, which can include security issues, weather patterns, uh, so flooding of roads. Um, and then also if the country would like to consider a regional implementation. Um, going back up, we do have filters for each of the PAMIs, so they can be filtered based on higher admin levels as well as their priority, um, their recommended priority. So countries can more e easily organize um, their PAMIs and make decisions based that way. Finally, step seven um, is rationale, documenting the rationale for planning of the OCV campaign. We do have a results table. Um, this will summarize the prioritization of targeted PAMIs. So how many PAMIs fall into each priority category, the percent of those PAMIs in each categories, and then the associated target populations. We also go through the dose requirements per year um, and the number of PAMIs that will be targeted in each of those years. Finally, as Lucy said earlier, we would really like to pilot this tool with any countries that are planning 
their multi-year plan of action, and we would welcome any feedback that they have so we can adjust the tool accordingly and refine the user guide. Thank you.